<laughs> okay. All right, we'll get started. First, uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, we're gathered here because Governor Newsom, uh, the state of California, and the county of Santa Clara are fining this pastor of this church more than three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And they're threatening jail for pastors who hold services in their church buildings. You know, the, this is egregious and it's violating the constitutional rights of our clients and it runs afoul of our American ideals. You know, I, I read a quote from the New York Times of the district, uh, someone from the district attorney's office here in Santa Clara County stating that, you know, we just have to set the Constitution aside in so many words. That, you know, we just have to suspend the constitutional rights to assemble, and the free exercise of religion. That can't be in America. Like everyone else, when COVID-19 first emerged, these pastors, this church, Calvary Chapel San Jose, complied with the uh, shutdown for two weeks. Let's talk about this, this pandemic and let's do what we can to protect people. Well, how long has it been now? I think we're in the eighth month. We've learned much about this virus, who it threatens, how to treat it, and how to move forward. That's why we're here today. These pastors are all about moving forward. And that's, they, they don't want to cower in fear. Though we recognize the governor's zeal to stop COVID-19, I'm concerned that there may be ulterior motives. Further, the cure cannot be worse than the disease which is certainly what is happening. You're going to hear from these pastors about the fact that there's a mental health crisis that presents a far greater risk than COVID-19. First Amendment could not be more clear. The government shall make no law regarding the establishment of religion or, the, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. These are unprecedented times, but in unprecedented times, we cannot suspend the Constitution as some in the Santa Clara County District's Attorney's Office have said, we have an expert epidemiologist right here from Santa Clara County, from Stanford, with all of the credentials one would ever want to be considered an expert. And he signed a declaration. You see, what happened is the county of Santa Clara has fought this church. They filed a restraining order seeking to restrain the church from meeting indoors. And that restraining order uh, will, if, if, if it succeeds, place this church in a position where they have to decide, are we going to bow down to Caesar or are we going to obey God? And I think this church is going to obey God. Amen. And in our opposition to that restraining order, which is being heard on Monday morning, it's going to be via telephone, we submitted the declaration of Dr. J. Badichara, a wonderful man. And he, after, through his declaration, citing his expertise in all sorts of studies, here's what he writes. He says, for this declaration, I estimated the age-specific infection fatality rates from Santa Clara seroprevalence study. Looking at that data for which he is the primary investigator, he says, listen to this. Please report on this. The infection survival rate is 100% among people between 0 and 19 years old. The survival rate for people between 20 and 39 years old, 99.987%. It's 99.84% for people between 40 and 49 years old. What about the people who are above 70 years old? It is, I, I'm sorry, I gave you the wrong statistics. It's 99.84% for people between 40 and 69 years old. And listen to this. The survival rate for people over 70 years old, 98.7%. The reality is people are more at risk of dying from the flu than COVID-19. Yet, we've never shut down churches in fear of the flu. 
We've never shut down schools in fear of the flu. People of California, please wake up. Hello, everyone. My name is Mariah Gondero, and I'm one of the attorneys that gets to represent Pastor Mike McClure. The egregious violations of religious rights are typified with what has recently happened to Pastor Mike McClure. After seeing high levels of depression and anxiety within his church congregation, and even people expressing thoughts of suicide, he felt a duty to reopen his church to shepherd the souls of his community. He has opened since Pentecost. However, the governor and the county contend this is an unacceptable, unacceptable risk and sure to create a super spreader event. Well, they're wrong. Over the past five months, not one person in his congregation has contracted COVID-19. They have contributed zero to the total infection rate in this county. Nonetheless, Santa Clara County has levied $350,000 in fines against Pastor Mike McClure and his church. And despite waiting five months to issue this temporary restraining order, and despite Santa Clara County being in one of the lowest tiers, the county claims their actions pose a grave threat to the community. This is just pure fear mongering and unjustified. If you recall over the summer, there were protests that raged over, over the country. The government and local officials notoriously and openly encouraged these protests. Outside of these favored protests, strict pro prohibitions govern otherwise similar gatherings. As you can see, the content of the gathering determines the government's treatment. This is content-based discrimination and unconstitutional. The government cannot pick and choose how it treats different groups based on what they have to say. Here, the state has publicly encouraged mass gatherings of one kind while characterizing much smaller controlled gatherings as super spreader events. This is unacceptable. Well, good morning. Thank you all for coming out. I'm blessed to just to, to share the reason why we're here. Obviously, there's a pandemic going on, but the pandemic now is a mental health crisis. People are hurting. People are really, really hurting. We see it every week. And our job, my job, I'm called to, to help those people that are hurting. That's all I want to do. That's it. And what we see is people like this woman that came on Sunday down from San Francisco, unable to go to church, just really distraught, filled with anxiety. She was born in Russia. And she said to me this Sunday, she said, I talked to my parents in Moscow. And I said, we couldn't find a church, but we found one. We're going there today. And they said, what do you mean you couldn't find one? She said, well, the churches, they're all closed. You're not allowed to go to church. And her parents said, you're not allowed to go to church? The churches here in Moscow and Russia have all been open. They haven't closed. And the response, she says, really? And her parents say, it sounds like California is more communist than Russia. And so we just want to help those people that are hurting. That's what we've been doing. That's what I've been called to do. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Thank you. And God bless you. What's your name? Your name is title. My name is uh, Mike McClure. Thank you, Senior Pastor Mike McClure of Calvary Chapel, San Jose. <laughs> That's okay. We'll help remind you. We're happy to do that. Well, good morning. My name is Pastor Jim Doman. I'm the founder and leader of Church United. It's an organization based in Orange County, California. We have over 2,000 California pastors in our organization. And today I'm representing those 2,000 California pastors. We also signed a declaration of essentiality that was sent to the governor at the beginning of the pandemic back in May. 1,500 of those pastors signed it and said, we declare we are going to open the church as essential. 
I'm a native Californian. I was born and raised in this great state, and I cannot imagine what is happening. Uncomprehensible. People are in crisis up and down the state. The mental health statistics are through the roof. And the government wants to close churches across the state. Multiple counties. You know what the heart of Jesus is? The heart of Jesus is to help people in need, to feed the poor, care for the sick, be with those who are grieving. I hear stories up and down the state daily. Every day I get a pastor. Jim, we're helping people. They're suicidal. Young kids, old kids. They're hungry. They're coming to our churches and we're feeding them. And the government's coming after these people who want to help those who are hurting? Really? This is the America? This is California? This isn't our country. It's being overtaken by communists. The church represents the heart of Jesus. As so far south, I've been in a news conference in Chula Vista. Lines of cars are lining up to get food. Latino communities, Pastor Amados, open their doors. Every day they do food. And guess what? The Chula Vista, Chula Vista Police Department are supporting and helping people get food. They're partnering with the churches, not going against them. We've got pastors in downtown Los Angeles. They do food kitchens. They help people in crisis. And they've got cars lined up around their buildings feeding people. But guess what? The church meets. We bring people together. And we're seeing the psychological effects of this pandemic. And people need people. We need to be able to hug and love on them. And guess what? If you don't want to go to church, don't go. But there's a ton of people who are coming out hurting. Acts Full Gospel in Oakland. We gave out gift cards. Again, people in need. They're meeting out in their parking lot so they can accommodate more people. We've got pastors and churches up and down the state who are loving on the people who are in their communities. So I beg you, please do not come after the churches. Let pastors and their church people minister to the needs of people in crisis. Thank you. Good morning and welcome. Obviously, everybody else is tall to me, so I'm going to bend this down. I apologize. <laughs> Good to see everybody this morning. My name is Micaiah Ermel. I'm the pastor of Southridge Church, and uh, we've been meeting throughout the pandemic. My wife and I founded the church six years ago. One of the verses where we felt led to start the church was out of Jeremiah 29, 7, which says, And work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I've sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. As a pastor of Southridge Church, my heart breaks to see what our world, our country, and even more so what our county and our city is going through. Many people are hurting, but they have no hope. Many people are suffering, but they have to suffer in silence. And that's where the church steps in with open arms and open hearts. This season has been so difficult for many people, but I believe no person has suffered as much as a six-year-old girl who lost her mother due to a drug overdose because of this pandemic. She couldn't deal with all the pressure that was coming around. This family tried to attend our drive-in church service on Easter Sunday. They pulled up at the uh, drive-in movie theater. San Jose PD said they could not allow her in because this was an unlawful gathering by the order of Director Sarah Cody and by a Director Angela Alvarado of the District Attorney's Office. They turned around. Eight days later, this six-year-old girl lost her mom. She was found unresponsive in a hotel room off of Monterey Highway. This is what is happening in so many homes across our great city. And the church is the hope for a hurting world. This past Sunday, I spoke with several of our church family. One church woman, she said she had to call uh, on somebody because they were suffering from mental health and she was suicidal. Another person, he works for a nonprofit. His name is Jose. And he said, I work and I help kids in the foster care system. He said, they are failing at school. He said, our organization is having to provide meals because the parents of these foster children aren't getting them to school to pick up their meals. So they said they're failing there with health and nutrition. These are just a few examples of the countless stories. But more to the point, on May 11th, Elon Musk said that he would be willing to go to jail so that he can continue to make cars. As a pastor, I believe what we do is so much more important than building cars. And if he is willing to go to jail for cars and cash, I'm willing to go to jail for Christ and for our community. And so we're taking a stand. 
we will be open. Our church has given out over 1,600 fabric masks. We've given out 3,000 pounds of food. We've given away 665 backpacks filled with supplies for children. We have helped over 1,500 families. We've given countless thousands of dollars away. Our church is not a threat to this community. As the director of our health department has said, churches are a threat to our community. We are not a threat. We are a help. Southridge has been meeting, and by God's grace, we will continue to meet, and our church will not stand by and watch as one more little girl has to go and watch her mom pass away. We will stand up, and we'll stand up for the hurting. Thank you so much, members of the press, for attending. Good morning. My name is Misael Silva. I am the Connections Pastor at Southridge Church, where I get to serve with Pastor Micaiah. Uh, our church reopened its doors back in Easter Sunday. And since then, we have been vividly made aware of the emotional hardship and cold of uh, emotional state that the people are in in our communities. Uh, we, although we do offer online services as we were required, so I like the way somebody put it. They said it's like watching a fireplace online. It sounds the same, it looks the same, but there's no warmth. See, anybody who attends our in-person services will tell you, oh my goodness, why did I wait so long? I am now encouraged, I am empowered by being together with the people. Amen. Because we believe the word of God says, I rejoice with those that said to me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Yeah. Right? So coming back, I want to ask you this. If your family was cold and suffering, wouldn't you want to make them warm? Mm. Wouldn't you want to do everything you could for them? That's what we're all standing here together, trying to bring warmth into our communities. And I leave you with this. During our time, we were offering drive through prayer. I had a grandma come in. The grandkids were in the back smiling, having a great time. And the, and the grandma was in the front just crying, not out of joy, but out of pain, out of pain for her daughter who was suffering. And she wanted to call it quits with her life. She was all done. And I remember praying with this grandma. and She just said, thank you so much. I now have hope, and I want to bring my daughter back next week because you guys are opened up. That's what the church is doing. We're opening our doors to bring hope and warmth to those who can't find it. My name is Miss Allen, and I thank you guys for your time. God bless you. Well, good morning. My name is Carson Atherley, and I'm an assistant pastor here at Calvary Chapel San Jose. It's good to be with you. I want to open up this morning by reading to you a verse from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28, it says this, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God's word makes it abundantly clear that true rest comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. That true rest comes only from a relationship with him. And in our community right now, we are experiencing tremendous restlessness. We are experiencing and seeing people who are depressed, who are anxious, who are afraid, who are lost, and even suicidal. I'd like to share with you just uh, something from my personal experience. I've had two gentlemen just in the last month who have come in to our office who have been suicidal. One gentleman who actually attempted to take his life just a few days earlier. The other came in in tears, not knowing what to do with his life or where to turn next. And we know that those men, they needed prayer, they needed fellowship, they needed encouragement from God's word. And should our doors have been closed, who knows what would have happened with those two gentlemen. But by God's grace, those men are with us. They're coming to church several times every week. They're full of joy, peace, and that rest that only comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And the point that I'm making is this. They didn't go to the health department, they came to the church. They didn't go to the county, they came to the Lord's house. And when people are desperate for help in our community, they call the church. And I can tell you that there are many, many more in our community who are going through similar things and need the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so the church here at Calvary San Jose, we are open because we believe God's word and we want people to hear it. We love people and we want all people, like the Lord Jesus Christ said, to be saved to come to the saving knowledge of who he is and to experience that rest that comes only through Jesus Christ. Thank you again. Good morning. Thank you for, for coming. My name is Hector Moreno. I'm the senior pastor 
of the home church in Campbell. And before I was a senior pastor, I was a deputy district attorney here with Santa Clara County for 10 years. And I tell you, when I worked as a deputy district attorney, the greatest help that I got was from the church. It was the pastor's, sorry, my wife is calling. <laughs> but, uh, um, but the greatest help I got was really from the church community. I love being a deputy district attorney. I, I love enforcing the law. But what I see happening right now is, is cruel and unusual punishment. $330,000 in fines levied against a pastor for simply opening up and simply trying to help uh, others in need. When I was a deputy district attorney, what we had to do was if we thought somebody was uh, in violation of uh, criminal offense, we had to charge them and then we had to go to court to prove it. Right now, the way the ordinance is with this county is one person can decide you are in violation and I'm going to continue to increase your fines. And by the way, you don't have a right to due process. You don't have a right to a jury trial. You're, you're stuck with this fine. That is not America. That is, and the U.S. Supreme Court has said that that's a violation of our Constitution. So I just want to, 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 to say that the pastors here, my brothers in Christ who are working diligently to serve this community, should be embraced, not charged, and not penalized for what they're doing and what we're doing. Our church has been open since July. Uh, we've been meeting outdoors, and we will be going indoors really soon. We are working with the Campbell Union School District. They have actually asked our church to assist their families in need because they have hurting families. This is the Campbell Union School District. So we are meeting with their families and feeding many of their families in need through our Second Harvest food, pro food Program at our church. We are the church and we're here to help. Please understand that. And uh, God bless you all for coming today. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Neil Mauman. I'm an ordained pastor and president of the Values Advocacy Council. Jesus' politicians, his representatives, his senators passed a law saying it was illegal to heal on the Sabbath. And Jesus said, I will still heal on the Sabbath. And he did. For the last 2,000 years, the church has been the driving force behind the changing of thousands of laws. Laws that no non-believer had ever thought to change. We banned child prostitution, widow burning, we stopped the superstitious killing of twins, and temple prostitution. We banned gladiatorial combat, slavery, and the abandonment of children and elders. The church has long stepped in to be the conscience of government. Yet, it did not limit itself to the changing of laws. When the plagues would come to, the ancient to ancient Rome, all the Romans would flee the cities. Then the Christians would come out of the woodwork to gather the dying, the poor, the broken into their homes and into their churches. When the slave hunters hunted escaped church, uh, slaves, the churches of the north would open up their doors to give them shelter and a hiding place against the laws. When wars broke nations apart, churches were the safe havens for where doctors could bring the wounded and dying to be tended to. We created the first charities, the first hospitals, and the first orphanages. Humans are made for touching. They need hugs. They need a shoulder. And they need to someone to look them in the eye and say, are you okay? A Zoom call or a six-foot distance will not reveal a hidden secret, an abused child, an abused spouse, or a deep depression that is leading to suicide. Studies have shown that each average small church saves the city between $140,000 to $300,000 a year by counseling youth groups, support groups, feeding programs, mother's groups, and men's groups. I know you wish to save lives, but it's not working. Since the COVID shutdown and the church closures, calls to the hotline in LA have increased by 8,000%. 25% of young adults have seriously considered suicide in the past month. Suicide and drug overdoses, deaths in teens are now far greater than COVID deaths. Active duty military suicides are up 20%. Army suicides are up 30%. There is a 20% increase in substance abuse and a 41% increase in heavy alcohol use by women. Domestic violence reporting has gone down, but domestic violence injuries have gone up by 200%. The county of Santa Clara refuses to release their suicide rates. 
They refuse to release the suicide statistics. Everyone hearing this, please call the county over and over again and ask them for the suicide statistics for this county. Ask them until they block you like they blocked this church when they asked for that. And yet, you want to close this church down. You want to jail this minister, and you want to let the suicides rates continue. Let me tell you, supervisors, every Christian in this county who understands the role of the church will be watching, to watching and holding you responsible when the tally comes out, and it will, and it will be terrible. The health director is appointed by the supervisors. You are responsible. If the supervisors of Santa Clara really care about lives, if the health department really cares about lives, if Governor Newsom really cares about lives, they will let the most powerful agent of life do what they have always done, minister to the poor, minister to the suffering, minister to the sick, and minister to the lonely. If you care about life, open up our churches. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Bishop Steve Perea. Um, I am a native of San Jose, born and raised, graduated from San Jose High School. Go Bulldogs, right? Uh, my church and churches have been open for 21 weeks now, indoors. Zero infections, zero transmissions. And I would say to our governor, who I've invited to my church, to our county supervisors, mayors, city officials, come and see for yourselves how safe we keep our people. Come and see for yourself how we keep them distant, how we sanitize everything. Come and see for yourself how we help people. You can't just rely on science alone. We are real people. And people are hurting. And we help people. We help them when they're depressed. We help them get off of alcohol. We help them get off of drugs. We feed them when they're hungry. We are real. We're not just science. We're real people. And we're helping the California people, people of California, we are helping. So I would say to the county supervisors, recognize that we are essential. And the, to all the churches of California and to the people of California, I would say this. Yes, we can be the church without the church. We've proven that. But should we? We are still a free country. Should we have to sacrifice our church buildings so that we can come together and worship? The answer is no, we shouldn't. Let's step up. Let's do what we got to do. God bless you all. Hello, my name is Larry Irig, I-H-R-I-G. I'm lead pastor of Celebration Church in Livermore, which is in Alameda County. Our church opened up uh, working with Jim Doman and Church United on Pentecost Sunday, May the 31st. When we decided to open, we were castigated locally, saying that we would be responsible for all new cases that would break out in the city. We were accused of not caring for the most vulnerable in our community. And uh, none of those things have turned out to be true. To the contrary, Celebration was the only church in the entire region that opened up. And we have seen a continual stream of people coming every single Sunday. One of the impacts we had was working and being in connection with local business people who were asking the city to reopen businesses. When the city wouldn't allow that and we opened up, we had people in the business community come to church because we were the first business that was opening in the community. And since then, every week we have people coming not all of them have been church people, but they're coming, they're finding a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and the church is continuing to have an impact in that community. One of the things that I think is important, we are all followers of Christ, and we're also followers of the Bible. If you look at the creation narrative in Genesis, the Bible talks about all that God created, and then he made man, but something unique about man. It says he breathed in him the breath of life, and he became a living, a spiritual soul, also, every evening would come down, he would come and spend time with man, which means he also made man to be a social being. So the spiritual need and the social need of humanity was given to him at creation. And the government was never given the responsibility to meet those needs. That fell on the shoulders of the church. And so the church is essential. No one would ever think of closing a grocery store because everybody needs food. Why would we consider closing a church 
When humanity was given into its being a spiritual part and a social part that can only be met, not staring at a glass screen, but met when people come together and fellowship with one another face to face. It's how God made us. And it's what we must continue to do. We have declared the church is essential. And it's essential because we provide what no other entity can provide in any town, any city, or any community. So the church has been open. Celebration has. We stand with Pastor Mike all the way from the far end of Alameda County, supporting him and every other church that opens. I must say, and echoing the sentiment of some of these other pastors, the church has been open and we will remain open. We have an obligation to do so. We're continuing to minister to people. One hospital in our region, the largest hospital in that particular area, a couple of months ago came out publicly and stated, this was the hospital statement, that they have had more suicides and more attempted suicides. They used the word that the numbers were unprecedented. How can we, who have the key, to meet people on that level. How could we not provide the opportunity to minister spiritually and to provide a social setting for people? So the church has and the church will remain open because it is necessary for us to provide what all of humanity needs. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jeff Gracio. I'm the pastor of Relentless Community Church here in San Jose. We're a relatively new church. Um, never in a million years would I have imagined when my wife and I got together and started a Bible study in our home that less than a year later we would be faced with what's called a global pandemic. Never in a million years did we think that we would be faced with this shelter in place order and literally have to go to video services. Now I have to say when it first happened, we were not ready. Our videos were horrible, but most of all, the biggest concern that went through my mind and my heart was our people. You see, um, I realized something that I'd never really thought about up until this point, right? We had to declare the church is essential. What we do, what we offer is important. People were lonely feeling a sense of isolation. People were struggling with depression and anxiety. And, and I, I just thought, man, how could we sit by while this is going on? And so we prayed, we prayed, we prayed. And finally, I just felt, why don't we start meeting outside in a park? Let's just do something. And we started to notice people showing up. They wanted to come. They wanted to come be part of it. And as of July 12th, we opened up for in-person, indoor services because we realized as a church that the needs, the spiritual, the emotional, and the mental health of people is essential and it's important. So as we go forward, as since we've been open, we've seen people come to church that never have attended church before, but saw a need, this need for something. People that were struggling, that were lacking hope, were showing up saying, is there gonna be hope? Is it gonna be okay? What's going to happen through all of this? And I, I just, I learn as a new pastor, I'm a new pastor. I haven't been pastoring long. And as a senior pastor, I've learned that the church, it's essential. The spiritual health, the mental health is important. It's just as important as physical health. And so I just want to say we're opening. We're remaining open. We've been opened. We're going to remain open because what we do is important. It's because we love people. It's because we care. It's because we believe that what we have to offer is important. And I'm going to read a verse. It says in Hebrews 10, 23, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir one another up to love and to good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Thank you and God bless you. Hello, my name is Tim Thompson. I'm the senior pastor of 412 Church in Murrieta, which is in Southern California. And I flew up here today to stand with 
uh, Pastor uh, McClure and uh, just support what he's doing. We, uh, we've been open the entire time. We've never closed down. Uh, back in May, May 1st, I was arrested on the west steps of the Capitol building here up here in uh, your area up by uh, Sacramento. And um, I was there preaching the gospel and I got arrested. Um, it was a, a protest of about 8,000, 10,000 people. Um, not one of us got sick. Uh, our church has been open the entire time. Nobody's dying. Nobody's sick. Um, everybody is very healthy. And one of the things that I wanted to share with you today is this. Many of you that are listening that aren't Christians, you know a Christian principle. And that principle is like this, that bad company corrupts good character. The whole idea is the people that you associate with, the people you surround yourself with, you end up becoming like them. You know, our parents taught us this. If you have loving parents, they taught you that they don't want you around certain people because they don't want you to become like those people. So whoever you're around, you're going to become like them. And that's an important thing for us as human beings to understand is that we're living in a time right now where people are pushing fear upon us. And that is not how God intended for us as Christians to live. He says that we are not given a spirit of fear. And so we don't want to walk around in fear. And I'll never forget when this first happened. There was a 99-year-old man who came to my church. He literally was walking in with this walker, and he was walking really slow. And we've never forced masks on anybody at our church, but if people want to wear one, they're welcome to. And here he comes just slowly walking in, and he has no mask on his face. And I said, so no mask for you, sir? And he, he paused for a moment, and he looked up at me, and he goes, I fought in Korea. And then he just kept walking. That was the, the extent of our conversation. It was a man who was living his life without fear. And the thing that I want to convey to you is that the church needs to be a place where people can come, where they're around people that aren't walking around in fear. People are showing up, and they don't know what to do. People that are new to the church, they come in with masks on, and they kind of look around. And you can see after a while this mental release that's going on with them. They're, they've been so bound up with fear, and all of a sudden they're around people that aren't full of fear. And that relieves them. And they, they take their masks off, they look around, oh my gosh, I'm okay. And there's, a, there's something about us Christians. We're not afraid to die. That, that's something that's beautiful about Christianity, is that we believe we have a life after this life on earth. We set our mind on things above where Christ is. And we live our lives without fear if we're living the Christian life properly. And so I, I stand with Pastor McClure. I pray that everybody that's watching this, that if you go to a church where your pastor will not open up, find another church. If you're a pastor and you haven't opened up, and you're, the, you're so undiscerning that you don't see that this is an attack on the bride of Christ, find another job. Thank you. Right before we take some questions from our attorneys, I don't think our great grandmothers that are here today that wanted to speak are quite a hundred yet, but they have, they, last night they said, we want to speak. So I'm gonna walk over and help escort them to the podium because I really think there's wisdom to listening to people who are older than us. Just a moment. Stand right next to each other. Okay. There you go. Go ahead and do your talk for reason. Okay. The pastors have worded things so well, I don't know how I could add to it except to say that I am not just a physical body, I'm physical, mental, and spiritual. And this church has been such a blessing to me, not only for me, but but for many others. And I just 
plead with you, please listen to what is being said. It is very wise and right on. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm 81. And the first time I came here, I immediately felt a sense of peace and just strength and joy. And that has stayed with me. This is an exceptional church. <laughs> I've been to a lot of churches as I moved around. The sermons here really helped me focus on my beliefs and my God. And that's really important. And I just can't understand why this is being done to the churches. And again, it is. It's against the Constitution. We're supposed to have freedom of religion, for crying out loud. <laughs> so Preach it. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's all I have to say, except it means a great deal to me, and I hope that things change, and certainly that this church can continue. There are probably four times more people here than there were when I came, and I'm trying to remember when it was, but it was somewhere around April. And that means people are coming from great distances to be here because they haven't found a church that's open. Anyway, thank you. Uh, we're going to take questions, but I know the first question that's going to come, and so I'm going to answer that real quickly. Uh, can't you meet outdoors? Yes. Yes, the church can meet outdoors. But listen what's happened uh, over time. We've had, uh, we've had two, we were told shut down for two weeks. It's become eight months. Uh, we were told originally here in Santa Clara County, well, you can meet outdoors, but you can only have 25 people. Meanwhile, the restaurants were unlimited in, in how many people they could have. We're told you can't have communion. Oh, by the way, don't sing. At what point in time are they going to come and appoint a health officer that is appointed to every church that has to sit in, make sure the church is doing things right? And, and so those are some of the issues where finally enough is enough. It, it's hit a breaking point, And that's why all of these pastors have come. There are hundreds and hundreds, possibly thousands of churches in California who are meeting and not only meeting, but they're meeting indoors. And the reason, what's going to happen when it's uh, 32 degrees here in a few months, sitting out here in Santa Clara County on a Sunday morning? What happened when, it was, when there was fire and the skies were dark with smoke and we were told, hey, sit outside and breathe that dirty air? What happened when it was, you know, 100 degrees out here on a Sunday morning? Is that more healthy? than being able to sit even distantly in, in, the, in the church building? That's, that's the answer to that.